Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, buongiorno a tutti. Um, if, you, uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm on there, at John Billion. Um, I'll tweet out some links a bit later on to things that I'm talking about. Um, what do you think of when you think of the WordPress interface? Uh, it's probably this, the admin area of WordPress. Uh, but this is actually just one way to interact with WordPress. Uh, for example, there's, uh, there's the admin area, there's Ajax, there's the REST API, XML RPC, uh, RSS feeds, uh, themes themselves, these are a way of interacting with WordPress, and leaving comments. These are all interfaces to WordPress. So WPCLI is another interface to WordPress. It's the command line interface. Uh, the project's goal is to offer a complete alternative to the WordPress admin area. Uh, for any action you might want to perform in the WordPress area, uh, admin area, there should be a compatible WPCLI command. Uh, you can find out all the information about WPCLI on wp-cli.org. It's a separate project to WordPress. Uh, unlike some other CMSs such as Drupal where you get the CLI tool built in, this is a separate project. Uh, it's managed on GitHub if you want to contribute, all of the information is on there. Uh, I'm not going to talk about installing WPCLI. Um, it's a fairly straightforward process. Um, also, if you use some WordPress uh, focused hosts such as SiteGround, you'll find that they already include WPCLI, so you don't need to worry about installing it. And here's the interface. It's, uh, yeah, it's not very intuitive, is it? How do we get started with this? This doesn't look a lot like the WordPress admin area. Ah, you can start typing things in here and see what happens. That's probably a good approach, yeah? Uh, a good way to get started, though, is to uh, take a look at the built-in help manuals. WPCLI has got a complete help manual built into it. Um, you can type WP help to get you started, and this will list all of the available commands for WPCLI. It's a good way of learning which kind of commands are available, what sort of things WPCLI can do. You can also type WP help followed by an individual command name, such as plugin or user, and it will give you all of the available options and information about that individual command. Uh, but quite often what I find is I start typing out a command and then I realize I can't remember the rest of it. So you can just type dash dash help on the end of it, and again, that will give you the same help information. But there's a really interesting feature of WPCLI called Guided Interactive Mode. It's this flag here called dash dash prompt. What this means is you can type WP and then a single command, and you don't have to remember all of the rest of the flags that are uh, part of that command. It will prompt you for those options. So a good one for this is adding a user to your site. For example, WP user add. Instead of having to remember the name of all the fields for their username, for their email address, for their role, you can type dash dash prompt and WPLI will guide you through each of those fields. It's a really good way to get started using WPCLI. So dash dash help and dash dash prompt, these are the two ways to really start getting used to WPCLI. There's also an online version of the help at wp-cli.org. Uh, you can find the handbook link up the top there. That uh, is a really good introduction to WPCLI. And all of the available commands are on WPCLI.org as well. Now, the good thing about the commands on the WPCLI website is they are actually generated directly from WPCLI itself. So the documentation is always exactly mirrored. So if you fancy browsing some commands to see what commands are available, you can go onto the website or you can type WP help into WPCLI and that will give you exactly the same information. Uh, the build process for WPCLI builds the documentation on the WPCLI website. Uh, another top tip is that commands generally follow this structure of WP followed by a noun and followed by a verb. So for example, WP user create is a command that creates users. WP plugin install is a command that installs a plugin. Uh, WP post meta add is a command that adds post meta. Uh, you get the idea. 
that's generally true, but not always. There are a couple of exceptions. For example, WP import. It's a great WordPress tradition, having an exception to it, all the rules. Um, but as a general rule, you'll find that all the commands are structured in a very similar manner. Now, there are two ways to use WPCLI. So far, I've been talking about one-off usage in the terminal. For example, here we can type in directly into our terminal, WP user create, and then the details of the user. And that goes ahead and creates a user. You can type in a command such as WP plugin list, and this is a good example of the kind of tabular output that you'll see a lot in WPCLI. Uh, it's really useful, uh, it's really a clear way of re representing data in your terminal. You can also specify uh, which format you would like for the output. So the default is a table, but you can get CSV output, you can get JSON output, YAML output, several others. But this is generally the interface that you're going to see on the command line. But this isn't the only, inter the only way to interface with WPCLI. Uh, you can also script WPCLI, typically through a, a bash script. So for example, here we've got a script that downloads WordPress, if it's not already there. It creates a configuration file, and it will populate it with uh, the details that you type in. And then you can carry on from here. You can do a complete WordPress installation. You can set up users. You can set up the initial plugins and themes. And you can script all of these. So next time you want to set up a WordPress site, instead of doing it manually, instead of downloading WordPress from the WordPress.org site, you can just run this script, type in a few parameters, and bam, it will go through the whole process of downloading, configuring, and installing WordPress. This is really useful for uh, spinning up a test website if you want to test something out with WordPress. But it's also handy every time you need to start a new uh, website, for example, for a new client. Instead of going through all these manual steps each time, you can have a nice shell script that you reuse, pass in some parameters that are relevant to that project, and bam, you've got a new WordPress website spun up. So this is really where the power of WPCLI comes in, is scripting it to do what you want when you're finding that you're doing repetitive tasks in WordPress. Uh, so the WPCLI project claims to be a complete alternative to the WordPress admin. Uh, this is mostly true. You can do almost everything in WPCLI that you can do in the admin area. And you can also do more things in WPCLI than you can do in the admin area. I'll get to those shortly. Uh, so let's take a quick look at some of the admin screens in WordPress and uh, see what the corresponding commands are. So probably the most common one is managing posts because it's managing content in your WordPress site. For example, WP post list. This will show you a nice tabular output of the posts on your site. Uh, you can create posts with WPCLI by passing in all of the parameters, for example, the title and the content and the author and the category and the tags. This is an interesting one, WP post edit. This will actually open up the editor that you've configured in your command line to edit the post content on the, uh, on the post. Uh, for example, if you've configured Vim or if you've configured PHPStorm, it'll open up that editor. You can sit there and type out a full blog post, for example, and save it. Once you close it, WPCLI will save that back to the database. Uh, you can manage your categories through WP term list and passing in the category, taxonomy name, and the same for post tags. So, so far, all of those things that we can do in the posts menu, we can do equally as well in WPCLI. Uh, you can manage media in WPCLI. Unfortunately, uh, you can't see thumbnail images in WPCLI. I'm sure someone's tried to write an ASCII art uh, interpreter, but we, uh, we haven't got one yet. And there's a couple of things you can do which you can't actually do yet in the admin area. For example, WP Media Import will take a full URL to a file, and it will download that file, import it into WordPress, and save it as an attachment. That's not a very easy process to do manually through your web browser. And WP Media Regenerate. Uh, you may have heard of a plugin called Regenerate Thumbnails. If you change your thumbnail sizes and you need to regenerate all of your thumbnails, you might have tried that plugin. But that functionality is built right into WPCLI, and it's much faster, it's much more performant. Uh, you can target specific attachments if you want, so all of that is in there. Uh, managing pages is just the same as posts. The difference is that we use a post type flag here to specify post type. 
and again you can create pages, all that kind of stuff. Comments, you can manage comments through WPCLI. Uh, the standard uh, uh, method is just to list the comments, but you can also approve individual comments, mark them as spam, all the same kind of comment management tools that you've got in the admin area or in WPCLI. Themes. Again, uh, in the admin area in WordPress, if you're managing themes, you get those nice big uh, thumbnails of the theme. Unfortunately, we don't get that in WPCLI, but apart from that, you can do all of the theme management that you'd otherwise be able to do. For example, you can install a theme and you can activate it immediately in one step. Now, you can even set the theme mods if you know what the uh, key names are there for the individual settings for a theme, you can set those directly in WPCLI. If you're feeling really brave or really adventurous, you can even start to manage widgets and nav menus in WPCLI. Uh, it's not very easy, it's not very intuitive because you have lots of parameters that you need to use. But, for example, if you're building out an automated script that manages widgets or nav menus, you can manage those completely through WPCLI. Uh, one thing you can't do, though, is bring up the theme editor in WPCLI. Uh, there have been some uh, attempts to do that, but so far we haven't got that in WPCLI. Plugins. This is also uh, a function you'll find yourself using a lot. Uh, the steps to installing a plugin in WordPress is a bit of a slow one. Using WPCLI, you can quickly install and activate plugins in, with just a few uh, touches of the keyboard. You can also search plugins. This is really handy if you're um, not in the mood for searching through the admin area in WordPress, just put in a search term, it will show you all of the search results, and again you can then go ahead and install plugins from that point. User management, again you can manage all of the users on your site, uh, you can list users, you can search users based on uh, their username or their email address or any other field, uh, you can restrict the list to roles, you can create users, this again is a really quick way of creating a user instead of having to fill out all the fields in the admin area. And you can update users quite often if you have a user who's forgotten their password. The easiest way actually is just to update it for them and then go and send them a password. Finally, we'll take a look at the settings. So all of the settings screens in WordPress are actually just an interface to options in WordPress. So WPCLI, excuse me, WPCLI lets you get options, so you can read it from the database. You can update options, for example, if you've forgotten your email address for your admin area, you can change that quickly. And again, you can search for options if you can't quite remember the exact option name that you want to fetch or update. There's a strange exception for the rewrite rules in WordPress. These are managed through a separate command called WP Rewrite. This is really handy for the initial setup of a website if you want to always set a particular rewrite, a URL rewrite structure. You can use this command and you can do that in your script. So when you set up your sites, uh, you've got your URL rewrites set up how you always want them. So those are some of the things you can do with WPCLI. But why would you do that? Why would you choose to sit there and type things in the command line when you can do it just as easily by clicking, pointing and clicking in your browser. Well, let's take a look. WPCLI is fast. These are the steps that you need to take to install a new plugin through the admin area in WordPress. Uh, you've got to find the admin area, you've got to log in with the username and password, go to the plugin screen, go to add new, search for the plugin name, find it in the results, click install, click active, uh, activate. It's a little bit long-winded. With WPCLI, this is all you need to do. This is the command to install and activate the plugin in one go. WP plugin install, name of your plugin, and then this dash dash activate flag will activate it. So when I'm working for my local uh, WordPress websites, I find that if I want to try out a new plugin, I'll just open up WP CLI and type that in there, and bam, I've immediately got that plugin installed and activated on my site without having to go through the admin area. Uh, but WPCLI is efficient too. Um, bulk managing users in WordPress isn't a very uh, easy thing to do. Uh, for example, if let's say you wanted to update the user role of a bunch of users, you would have to individually go into each user, 
and change that user role. With WPCLI, we can run a command like this, WP user update. I will search for all of the users got, that have got example.com in their email address, and then we'll set their role to a subscriber with this flag here. And you can see here that WPCLI just goes bam, 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 and updates all of those users. Now imagine if you've got thousands of users on your site. That's going to save you a lot of time. And you can just let that sit there and run. It doesn't run instantly, but you know it's certainly a lot quicker than going into all of those individual users uh, in the admin area. This is actually one of the things I really use WPCLI for a lot, is managing users. That's one of the, um, the areas where it really outperforms the admin area a lot. Uh, if you maintain a WordPress multi-site installation, you really should be using WPCLI because it makes things a lot easier. Um, for example, uh, you can uh, target an individual site on the network using the dash dash URL parameter. So if we type WP plugin list and we pass in this URL, it's going to list all of the plugins that are active on that particular site on the network. Uh, user management, again, this is uh, a lot easier. We can set an individual role for a user on an individual site. So for example, if you've got a new user on your network and they're not yet a member of an individual site, you can script that or you can type it in and it will immediately set that user's role to the one that you specified on that individual site. Again, if you've got a high number of websites on your network, you'll be able to loop through all of the sites on the network and add all of those users very quickly. If you try to do that in the admin area, that's going to take you a long time. Uh, again, option management, this is all done through the URL parameter. Uh, there's a few other things you can do with regard to multi-site. You can uh, list sites, you can create sites. Again, I'm using the dash dash prompt flag here, which means you don't have to remember the name of all of the flags, so you don't have to type in the URL and the site title and the admin email address. It will prompt those and it will go and create that site for you nicely and quickly. And then a command here, which you might not find uh, you use very, op uh, very often, uh, the network options. So if you go to the settings screen in the network admin area, uh, in WPCLI, this is technically called network meta, and you can manage all of those network settings from WPCLI uh, if you find that you need to. Uh, does anybody uh, know about multi-network support in multi-site? You can actually have... Uh, this is like a little known feature. In multi-site, you can actually have multiple multi-sites on the same network. It's not a very well known thing. So WPCLI supports this by uh, passing in the network ID there. So you've got full support for all of the functionality in uh, multi-site. Here's some things that you might not immediately think of. You can enhance the security of your website using WPCLI. Uh, Users, uh, administrators on your site will be able to edit themes and plugins and install themes and perform updates. If you don't want them doing that, you can add this uh, definition into your config file that disables that functionality. You can even set that through WPCLI itself with the wp-config command. But the problem then is that you can't go into the admin area and you can't manage updates and plugins and themes. WPCLI, though, is unaffected by this command. So if you continue to use WPCLI on a site where you've got disallowed file mods set to true, you'll still be able to install languages, you'll be able to install plugins and themes, you'll even be able to uh, perform updates because of the way WPCLI works, it doesn't take into account this disallowed file mods uh, constant. So that means you can lock down the admin area so your administrators aren't going to go in there and mess things up by running updates and installing new plugins, but you can still manage those yourself through WPCLI. This is a really powerful feature of WPCLI. Uh, hands up if you ever had a WordPress website that has got a blank screen on it because you've got a fatal PHP error and you can't log into the admin area, you can't manage your users, you can't do anything. WPCLI has got this really handy flag called skip plugins. So you can run any command and attach the skip plugins flag to the end of it, and it will skip the loading of those plugins, uh, either all of the plugins here or an individual plugin name or even themes, although that doesn't make much sense. 
and it will load WordPress and it will allow you to interact with WordPress without that plugin included on that particular request. This is a really good way to uh, get yourself out of this problem where you've got a fatal error on your site and you can't manage it. So that's a good one to remember. There's also a dash dash require flag. This will allow you to include a PHP file before it loads WordPress and before it loads uh, any commands that you run. Um, typically you can you know, use this to uh, write a little bit of PHP code that maybe fixes whatever error you've run into. Run it once, it will include that file, then it will load WordPress and then hopefully you've fixed your problem. Uh, finally also you can run, run WPCLI in debug mode with dash dash debug and that will show all of the PHP warnings and notices that uh, otherwise get hidden uh, by WPCLI. So a good thought exercise uh, when you're starting to use WPCLI is what do you do repeatedly on your site that you should be able to automate? Have a think about it. Like, uh, the installation of WordPress to start with is a good one, but user management is another one. Maybe there's things that you do repeatedly on your site and you think, ah, it would be great if I could automate this. You should be able to automate it with WPCLI. Uh, you can administer remote websites with WPCLI. This is a really handy feature. Um, if you've got a production website on a server and you normally SSH into the server and then perform some actions, WPCLI has a concept called aliases, and it's this app syntax here. And in your configuration file for WPCLI, you can set up a uh, path to files, you can set up the SSH credentials, and every time you run this command with a app prod, WPCLI behind the scenes will SSH into that server, it will navigate to the directory you specify, it will run the command, it will show you the output, and then it will disconnect from SSH. So it does it all in one. It means you don't have to remember those SSH configurations uh, every time you want to manage a remote site. Uh, it's handy also for local sites, not just for SSH. So for example, um, this is a site, this is a path to a site on my local machine. I can just access this with, you know, for example, WP at dev, even if I'm not in that directory when I'm managing it. So these are aliases, these are really useful. Uh, how about converting a site to HTTPS? HTTPS is becoming very important these days for SEO and performance and security. You can easily convert your entire site to HTTPS with the WP search replace command. Uh, here we're switching from the HTTP protocol to HTTPS and what, what WPCLI will do is it'll go through your entire database, it will show you uh, all of the fields that it's replaced, but the key thing is that this is aware of serialized data. So if you've got a plugin on your site maybe that is storing data in a serialized array, WPCLI won't mess that up like you would if you did a regular search replace through MySQL. So this is a really handy uh, 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 command. Also, if you just want to change your domain name to point somewhere else, again, WP search replace. This is one I found quite recently. Uh, you can quickly connect to MySQL using the credentials that are in your WP config file. So let's say you need to connect to MySQL to run a command, but who remembers their MySQL username and password. Usually what you're going to do is you're going to go and find your WP config file, find those credentials in there and paste them in the command line. With this shortcut here called WPDBCLI, what it does is it reads those credentials straight out of your config file so you don't need to go and find them yourself. And it just opens up a MySQL command line. You can run your SQL commands and uh, you haven't had to go and find those credentials. Here's a bit of a crazy one. You can blog via the WP CLI. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it, but you can. Uh, WP post create. Um, this is a command that will create a post, but there's an interesting flag here called dash dash edit. And again, this opens up the editor that you've configured on your command line, so you can type out the full contents of your post, and then when you save it and close your editor, WP CLI will save that as a post to the database. And there's an equivalent as well, WP post edit, give it a post ID, and again, it will open up the editor that you've configured so you can edit that post on the command line. It's probably not something that you're going to do very often, 
it's not going to replace Gutenberg anytime yet, but it's there if you need it in an emergency. Maybe we'll have a Gutenberg block builder in WPCLI one day. <laughs> And there's a really interesting page on the WPCLI website called Shell Friends. It's in the handbook, uh, if you just go on there and search for Shell Friends. Uh, this page introduces you to a lot of the foundational um, uh, functionality of the command line that isn't specific to WPCLI. So, for example, interpolation here, um, piping, uh, these are all uh, features of the command line that will help you use WPCLI much more efficiently. For example, what we're doing here is we're uh, running a command WP post list and fetching the IDs, and then we're passing it into WP post delete in order to delete a bunch of posts. And here we're using piping to fetch a list of all the available languages and then automatically install them. So if you want to set up a multilingual site, you can do that in one command. So if you're not very familiar with a lot of the concepts of the command line, this Shell Friends page on the WPCLI website is a really useful one to uh, get some tips and tricks on how to get started there. So that's uh, wp-cli.org. Uh, I've also started a newsletter called WPCLI Tips. Uh, unfortunately, I've neglected this a little bit over the summer. I had a bit of an extended summer break. But if you go to wp-cli.tips, you can sign up and uh, I'll start sending out a monthly email newsletter again with tips to using WPCLI, uh, news on new features in WPCLI, that kind of thing. So you can sign up there. And that's it for me. Thanks very much. Does anybody have any questions? <laughs>